Hi, I'm Rob Vanstone. Welcome to the uh, latest and hopefully greatest edition of the Rider Rumblings video podcast. I am wearing the extremely ugly headphones. Uh, Murray McCormick, uh, our venerable football writer, has also joined me, and we are very pleased today to have with us the Saskatchewan Rough Riders General Manager and Vice President of Football Operations, uh, future Plaza of Honor member, Tom Pate Memorial Award winner, 2008. <laughs> Great Cup champion, 2007, Jeremy O'Day. Is that enough resume building there, Jeremy? Yeah, it's probably a little bit too much, Rob, but thank you for that. <laughs> and let's not forget two touchdown receptions. There you one go. One from Steve yeah. Sarkeesian and one from Doug Flutie. How many people have caught a touchdown pass from Doug Flutie who are still in the CFL? So, <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, we're going to just basically drill down deep into the uh, mechanics of the roster now that the free agent period hasn't necessarily expired, but it's uh, at least uh, calmed down. I'm sure Jeremy's pretty relieved by that compared to uh, last week. Um, just at the outset, Jeremy, when you look at the composition of the team now compared to what you hoped it would be, either entering free agency or entering the period where you were trying to resign a lot of your players in advance of February 8th, how do you like what you have compared to what you hoped you would have? in mid-February 2022? Yeah, I think when you go into free agency, you obviously have some areas that you're, you're kind of trying to focus in on. Um, you know, we, we get you try to get as many guys as you want back or as, as the staff wants back and make that a priority. And so those guys are kind of filling, they're filling the holes that you may have had even though they didn't leave, right? So, um, you know, when we when we do our roster, we, we take everyone off the the roster that's that's a potential free agent and then we start building it back um, with each free agent that we sign back um, so we obviously identified the players that were uh, currently on the team that we wanted to try to get back some of those guys were um, we're going to take a little bit longer some some were earlier in the process um, but they were all pieces uh, that we thought were important to bring back um, and then once you get closer to the free agent window you got to look at you know, what are the chances that we're going to get all those players back? Um, is anyone going to, are we going to lose anyone that we wanted back? Um, and if so, how do you replace that on your roster, right? So um, as we got closer to free agency and as guys continued to sign back with us, I think we were in a position where we, we had a, a big receiver that we hadn't signed back yet that we were still working on. Um, we were having conversations with, a couple Sam linebackers uh, during that period, which is a, a point of emphasis. And then, uh, you know, another, another important piece is we, that we were looking at was was potentially another defensive back. Um, and so, um, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of positions that we needed to fill that we didn't feel comfortable about. Um, we evaluated all the players in free agency to see if there would be value of bringing. Uh, anyone in, in in all areas and uh, you know we, we came to conclusion that wasn't going to be overly um, active in free agency aside from getting our guys back and then adding a couple pieces uh, that we thought were necessary to add. Murph? Uh, you may be kind of, what, what spots are you looking for to maybe bolster heading into training camp? Um, well, all spots, Murray. I think that um, if you ever just kind of just focus in on a few key areas, then your depth's really not going to be there, right? So um, you don't ever really feel comfortable in any position um, because you're an injury away from having the next person that has to step in and play. So um, when you say, what are we looking to bolster? Every single position, you're trying to create competition. Um, I think in particular, you know, we're going to have a, a younger defensive backfield than we've had in the past. Um, so we're going to look for some of those guys that, that played well for us last year to, to step up and have bigger roles. But it's also our job to find good players. I think we really, last year we really focused in on defensive line. And I think, um, you know, through the process, we were able to find a lot of good young defensive linemen that, that really helped us out last year. So. Um, we focus in on all of them. I know that sounds kind of corny, but um, it is the truth. We try to create competition and sign the best players in every area. We don't ever feel like we're, uh, you know, we're fine in that area. We don't, we don't scout, we don't uh, recruit because we feel like we're good. And 
usually if you do that, then you're in, you end up getting injuries and you're not, um, you're not as solidified as you hope coming into camp. So when you have 100 guys coming into camp, you want to have competition in every position. Jeremy, you, um, you mentioned the defensive line. You mentioned the, the linebackers. Darnell Sankey was signed. Larry Dean was re-signed. Derek Moncrief is back. There was a report on Three Down Nation earlier this week that the Rough Riders are at least entertaining the notion of going with an All-American front seven. Uh, is that being considered? And if so, what's the likelihood of that scenario coming to fruition? Yeah, I don't know where the report came or, or who made it up, but it certainly didn't come from anyone from our building. Um, the reality is we try to sign as many good players as possible, um, regardless of the position. And um, we knew that Larry was coming back from a, from a pretty tough injury to come back from. Um, and we didn't really want to be put in the same position if anything happened in camp um, where we weren't in a good position to move forward. So, um, you know, Signing uh, Sankey was just uh, just felt like it was the right right thing to do. Um, we we realized that we weren't going to bring uh, Dion Lacey back and um, wanted to have a you know a true linebacker um, available and and uh, you know hopefully those both those, both those guys are going to get an opportunity to to help win football games for us. But that will kind of get shaken out in training camp. But uh, as of now, unless um, unless there's a new new person that's uh, been sitting in my chair right now. We're still planning on uh, the ratio being with one Canadian and, and Micah Tights playing for us. Sorry, folks. I got blocked out there. <laughs> I'll chime in then. Uh, Jeremy, what, is, what does Cody Fajardo have to do to get back to his CFL All-Star level of 2019? Or am I building the assumption of a, at least a minor regression into the question, considering that there were factors beyond his control last season, such as injuries and offensive line, what have you? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, it, you know, Cody just needs to have a good off season and, you know, he's got a, he's, he's going to be having a second year under a, a, a new offensive coordinator, which will help. He'll feel more comfortable in camp. And, you know, re reality is we got to do things to help him um, that are not in his control as well, as right, as well. Um, you know, I think you saw last year, we had a, a young offensive line that, um, that we, we we had some injuries and some some players that decided not to not to play before camp and um, you know we lost Tieran, uh early in camp before we even played a game and um, we were kind of moving guys around a little bit there. Logan Furlan was was pushed into action, which is really good for his development. Um, but you know he was a first year player um, that first time playing uh, playing in pro pro football game and and uh, and you end up playing there for the whole season for us. So. Um, we look for him to grow, and Evan, first time being uh, with our offensive line, and uh, Dan Clark being uh, a consistent player for us up front, and we look for some of those tackles that got some experience last year to be be better when they come to camp. But also, um, you know, hopefully get Tieran back. He's he's feeling uh, a lot healthier and lifting weights again. And we've added uh, Nate Rogers that should. Should help us up front as well, and and um, you know I, I, I keep saying it. I'm not trying to put pressure on myself or the personnel guys, but um, you know it is our job to to find good players that are going to come in and be um, you know good good solid starters and 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 help us win football games. So um, you know I, I, that's that's the way I feel. I feel like um, that's our job is to to bring in new players that are able to um, to help us win. We've we've had a good track record of that and. Um, obviously, we want to build on that, but you know, I think it's a combination of everything. He'll have another year under his belt with with Coach Moss, and uh, and we've got to do as much as we can to help him um, from the things that were out of his control. Rob, you asked the next one. I keep sorry, I have to talk to Mark. I keep getting disconnected. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll bring Candy in for some questions if Murray keeps letting us down here. Yeah, I'm going to get disconnected. <laughs> um, potentially a annoying question here I, i'm sh i'm not sure if you saw what chris jones had to say about cody fajardo a few weeks ago do you have any thoughts on the sentiments he expressed about uh cody's attributes you're gonna have to fill me in on exactly what he said it's been a while since I, I, since those comments how do i paraphrase it basically um said that he wasn't necessarily a, a pure passer and that uh, that Stephen McAdoo had done a lot to, I think, 
bolster what uh, Cody was able to do. I think he started off as it started off as a defense of of uh, Stephen McAdoo as much as anything, and uh, and then it kind of devolved into uh, more of a critique of um, Cody Perjard. I'm just trying to find the exact precise wording here. So that I'm That's not. Okay. I, I think I get the gist of it. I, I think I remember. Uh, I recall uh, reading the same, uh, Rob. So yeah, I, I don't really need to defend Cody's play, and and yeah. you know, Chris is certainly um, uh, certainly entitled to his opinion of, of any player uh, in our league, and and uh, got a ton of respect for for Chris. But um, you know, I, I think if you look at Cody in his two years of starting, I think he's averaged in the top, being in the top three for passing yards in our league. So. Um, you know, I think he's there'd be an argument there to say that if he's not a, a passer, then, then how do you how do you fall in the top three of passing yards each of the last two years? And and honestly, um, you know, there's there's some of that sentiment that I wouldn't disagree with. Cody does use his legs, and it's a lot of the the value that he brings to the team is he's able to extend plays and make big plays off of off of his legs, and it's not something that I think that he would debate. Um, it's another weapon that he has uh, in his arsenal that that he uses to to help win ball games. Um, you know, I don't think anyone's upset when he's scrambling around and, and diving at the pylon to win games for us. And um, you know, there's different ways to skin a cat. And some some quarterbacks are going to sit in the pocket and not be very mobile. Uh, Cody just happens to be mobile and is able to pass and run, which is a lot of the reasons why we like him so much. Murph. Paging Murray Murray. McCormick. (laughs) We might be going solo here, Rob. (laughs) An intimate chat with Jeremy O'Day. Uh, Yesterday, or yesterday being Wednesday, you announced the signing of Jake, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, uh, Dolla Gala, only six foot seven. Uh, What what does he bring to the table aside from being potentially the captain of the off-season Rough Rider basketball team? (laughs) Yeah, Jake is uh, someone that we saw. I think he came out in 2018. We saw him at a an all-star game in Texas called the Gridiron Classic, and um, that's kind of the first first time we we experienced seeing him in person, and and uh, something that you saw right away was his arm strength, and um, so we had some interest in him uh, early on when he was coming out of college. He ends up end up being signed by the the Cincinnati Bengals, and he he really had a heck of a preseason with them in 2019. Um, so we kind of had our eye on him a little bit. Um, he's actually from uh, the same area of, of New York that Naaman Roosevelt's with, and, and Naaman actually worked out with him in the off season. Um, uh, prior to th- this last season, they they worked out quite a bit, and um, I did pick Naaman's brain a little bit about him, and and uh, we got to watch him in a couple NFL training camps, and really it just came down to timing. He's bounced around uh, with a couple NFL teams, uh, with the the Bengals and the Packers and and the Patriots. Um, he's actually gone back to the Patriots twice and back to the Packers twice and um, you know really just had him on our negotiation list and and wanted to add a good uh, a good quarterback to the group and and uh, he was he expressed his interest back and we were able to to work out a deal so um, the first thing that we'll we'll uh, we'll jump out at is is his arm strength and really just feel like he has the ability to make all the throws on our big field and it's it's uh, it is a challenging field uh, to, to throw a football on if, if you have never done it before with, uh, with the distance of, of our sidelines and, and the space that's created. So um, just wanted to add another good quarterback to the group. She's from the Buffalo area too, so that's a bonus, right? <laughs> All the yeah, great ones come yeah, from there. <laughs> he's, he's, from, he's from the 716 area code. And, um, he actually went to high school at uh, a school that my uncle uh, taught biology at for, for a long time. He didn't actually teach Jake, he was already retired by then, but it's the same same school my uncle worked at. Uh, six foot seven quarterbacks are kind of a trendy topic, uh, and a few few fans have asked me recently about uh, Paxton Lynch, uh, whether the, he is still at all in the Ryder plans. I've I looked at the roster the roster as it exists on Ryderville.com does not include him right now. Yeah, we we uh, we moved him to suspended uh, Rob at, during the playoffs. I think. We were pretty um, pretty upfront with uh, the fact that um, that he wasn't vaccinated, and and uh, we would be in, in a situation where uh, in the playoffs, or if we went to the Grey Cup, if he was on the roster, then he wouldn't have been able to 
to travel with the team. So uh, he was moved to the suspended uh, list. Um, we are having conversations with him um, about potentially coming back. He's also got some interest down south and, and some other opportunities that may come into a factor uh, with him. So, um, you know, if I had to if I had to say right now, it's the likelihood of him being back would be pretty slim. Um, another possible returnee, although it doesn't sound promising with regard to Paxton Lynch, maybe more promising, hopefully, with regard to Brendan Labatt. I know you've been having some discussions with him. Is there any anything to update as far as the likelihood of Brendan returning this season? Um, nothing since the last time we talked. We did have some discussions, and really, it's going to come down to um, you know whether it's whether it's a fit for for Brennan if if it's something that he wants to choose to do, um, and then also whether it would fit in with the structure of our salary cap. And so we've had some initial discussions, and 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 uh, you know we'll have more discussions in the near future of of what direction that would go and. Um, you know, there's there would be a lot of lot of things to consider if that was the case of, you know, where where would he fit in? Um, you know, if he came back and, um, you know, uh, is it is it as easy as getting back on a bike and going back out there and playing at a high level? And um, you know, it's been a, a number of years since he's played, but um, was such a great player for us that um, you know we had we've, we've had, had some discussions and um, uh, we'll see where it goes in the future. How tall of an order would it be for him to return, considering that he did not play a lot of games in 2019, then 2020 was canceled, then he opted out of 2020. When you're talking 2018, the last time he played full time when he turns 36 during the season, uh, although once upon a time, Jeremy O'Day played at 36 and was an all-star. So that's not necessarily a, a lethal age for an offensive lineman. Is it still a big ask considering Jeremy's last few years and how they've unfolded? Um, that's tough to tell. It's not, there's not a lot of, um, literature or, or, or examples where we could go back and say, well, last time a guy hadn't played in two and a half years, uh, and he was at that age, you know, would, would he be able to bounce back and, um, play at the level or close to the level that he played for before? So it'd be a, it'd be an interesting question. You know, it, um, it's certainly part of our discussion when we talk about, you know, um, you know, wish I had a crystal ball and, and you could say that he would jump right back in there uh, after being out for a while and, and, and be an all-star player. And, and then also the commitment level that that would take um, to, to be off for that amount of time and then get yourself back uh, into football shape and, 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 and working with the weights and, and committing to, to playing a football season. So those are, those are all things that we, we were, ta were talking about and we'll continue to talk about. Um, and We'll, we'll have more to report on that down the road. We do have breaking news. Murray McCormick is still alive. <laughs> back. We're welcoming him back. We're going to take a break, and we will return <laughs> shortly. If you'll bear with us, we will resume the uh, uh, Rider Rumblings podcast, hopefully as a troika. So please pray for Murray, and we will return, hopefully, as a, uh, as a triumvirate. And we are back, uh, and Murray McCormick is back. I see his... Uh, golden dome staring at us uh for part two of the rider rumblings video podcast we are here with rough riders general manager vice president of football operations jeremy o'day uh and now that the search party has found murray i'm going to defer to my worthy constituent and he can ask as many questions as he uh as his little heart desires uh, sorry about this jeremy no go problem. ahead Mur. No problem. jeremy i'm going to throw this at you training camp opens may 15th do we know where it's going to be this year is it going to be saskatoon or regina um, we're still actually working through that. It's a great question. We've been working on it the last, uh, just the last little while. It, it's funny how quickly when, uh, when, you, when you finish uh, one part of the job, which is free agency, you, you kind of just jump right back into the, the next part, which is, is trying to work through training camp, practice schedule, uh, draft schedule, draft scouting, combine work, and all that. So we're actually getting to the point where we're, we're, we're getting close to making a decision on that. Um, one of the things that was a big factor uh, in us staying last year was just the uh, the COVID protocol. So there's a little bit. Um, it, it's unlike uh, another uh, any other year where we're we're actually just waiting to get some guidance on what our what our rules and restrictions may be at that time. Um, and the reason why it would change anything, Murray, is just the the space at our stadium is rather large, and so 
if we have to social distance, then um, we have the ability to do that in our stadium uh, greater than we would at the, the U of S. So um, we, we love going up there. If, uh, if, if, it's, uh, if it's something that we can do uh, and still follow the guidelines, if those guidelines are still there, then, uh, then certainly uh, we'd, we'd love to go back up there. I also remember in 2013, we went down to Bradenton if it was probably one of the best weeks of my job, life on the job. And it, it, it had, I think it had an impact on the performance in the Great Cup down the road. Were there any thoughts of, of a mini camp like that or getting those kind of camps back or has COVID gotten in the way of changing everything like that? I actually remember, Murray, you were you were wandering through the parking lot. I actually pulled up and had to give you directions to the field. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> and that was in Regina. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it was there. Uh, I remember Murray, that. I'd, I'd, I'd love, I'd love, I loved the mini camps. I thought they were great. Um, just uh, got a lot out of them. Um, they were great for uh, evaluating uh, personnel. And, and the environment, like you said, Murray, it's, all, it's just fantastic being down there. Um, but, you know, it's actually been removed uh, from the CBA where we're not allowed to have those okay. mini camps. Um, and how they've, they've adjusted it is they allow us to bring more players to, uh, to training camp. So if you, if you remember last year, we had uh, 100 players that attended uh, starting with rookie camp. Uh, and that was kind of to offset um, not, not being able to have mini camps uh, during the off season. So... Um, I was all, I'm all in favor of them. I, I, I love, uh, I love the, the mini camps. I'm going to be honest. It's, uh, one of the, the most enjoyable, least stressful times of the year for me. Cause, um, we're not playing any games real quick and you're just evaluating all the players that you've been scouting and recruiting for a while. And, and, uh, and the weather's great, right. And, and everyone's in a good mood cause there's not a lot of pressure at that time. So, um, Unfortunately, we won't be going back down and doing those. Uh, I always, if I always, if I have a vote, I always vote to have them. But, uh, but I understand also um, there is also, uh, you know, some financial elements to to have a mini camp as well. Well, if my vote counts, I vote going back to. So. I'll put you on. I'll put you in the list. I'll get you a ballot. <laughs> Rob, uh, William Powell, uh, how do you plan to? Say what's sort of the blueprint for tailback? Yeah, I think, um, you know, right now, obviously, with who's on our roster, Jamal Morrow, I think, has earned an opportunity to to get an increased role there. He's also has been, uh, as the season went on, was very important in our return game. So um, we feel like running back is a position where we should be able to find uh, some good young running backs. Um, William Powell is just a fantastic. He was kind of uh, the jack of all trades and, and was good uh, at a lot of different areas. Um, and, and in that situation, we decided that we were going to go younger. And, um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes tough decisions have to be made on, on very good people and very good football players. And he certainly would fall in that category. Um, great in the locker room, uh, great on the field, uh, can, can run with the football, can pass block, can catch it out of the backfield. Just uh, you love a lot of qualities that William brought to our team. I um, think that Jamal has a lot of those uh, characteristics as well. Um, but again, that's another area where we need to uh, scout and recruit and, uh, and bring good players in. And um, we just decided to go a little bit uh, younger at that position. Might Jamal bring you the potential of more explosiveness from that position? Uh, it's certainly something that we hope. Um, we want to we wanna get some more juice out of that, uh, out of that position and, and – uh, hopefully try to turn some of those uh, five-yard gains into 10-yard gains. And that, that's uh, something that we discussed and uh, something that we're hopeful. We, we've got to do um, a good job of blocking up front as well and, and getting a hat on a hat and, and, and moving people off the ball. And um, some of that responsibility is, is laid on our offensive line. But, um, but that's what we're hoping for. We want to get uh, more explosive plays and big plays and uh, ultimately score more, po more points. It that looks segues like nicely into a question from Murray about Duke Williams. Murr? Oh, was it? Okay, sorry. I just had to. Uh, what do you expect from Duke Williams in his first full season if he gets with a training camp with Cody and everybody else? Well, we just hopefully he, he, uh, he starts where he finished off the season, right? He came in, was an immediate impact for us on offense, and um, it was very obvious that he brought a lot to the table when he got here. and. 
uh, has a presence to him. Um, anytime you come into a team that late in the season, um, it's difficult to be able to fit in with the group. And uh, I, I credit the guys in the locker room, the Shacks, the, 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 the Kyrens and Cody's and all the guys for just um, being open to him coming in and, and allowing him to be himself and, and fit right in with the group. That was, um, you know, I think uh, in certain positions or any position when you bring in a player and, and he comes in that late and he comes in the room, um, you don't know whether it's going to ruffle feathers or it's going to make guys feel uncomfortable. And those guys, they just they uh, they just embraced him, and and uh, not only did they embrace him, but they encouraged him to come back. You know, after the season was over, they that receiver group was was very motivated to come back and and, and wanted to come back and and uh, and 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 prove that we could get over the hump. So uh, with Duke, we just we want him to come back and 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 take back off where, where he left off. And, you know, I think when he came in, a lot of people don't know, but he was actually uh, coming off a hamstring that he had from uh, from the NFL preseason that he was still still getting healthy. And there was two games where uh, where he actually worked out in warm-ups for us uh, to make sure that he could play the game. And uh, one of them he had a really big game in. Um, so just really coming healthy. I know that... Um, uh, in the past, he's he's uh, come in a little bit lighter, and and uh, which was the second year in the CFL, uh, which was by do design by him and um, allowed him to have a, just a great season. And um, but he does a lot of a lot of positive things, and um, you know he's such strong hands and, and ability to attack the football, and he blocks and uh, he's excitable and he just makes plays, and so we're we're happy to have him back and. Um, we were relieved when he when he decided to resign with us. He was straightforward in, in in his message to us that he wanted to be back after the season. Um, it's nice to know that, but there was there was some negotiation that had to happen, and just appreciate that he stuck with us and and uh, he listened to all the other teams and what they had to say. And the reality of is is he wanted to come back here uh, for the reason of winning a Grey Cup. Jeremy, do you think there needs to be a greater appreciation for the work you did leading up to February 8th? Um, Post-February 8th, there, there's been a lot of talk about the players who have not returned. There's been Ed, Ed Ganey, uh, Lucia's Purifoy, Micah Johnson, Dion Lacey, et cetera, uh, John Ryan. Um, but it seems to me that kind of overshadowed A.C. Leonard resigning, Duke Williams resigning, uh, a, a whole scroll of players or resigning in advance of that. Uh, I mean, I, re I realize you can't control outside perception, but is there an issue there that you'd like to discuss in that? I don't know. I just think there's been a little bit of a sky is falling mentality out there that might be um, out there at the expense of more perspective on what was done leading up to February 8th, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's fair enough. Um, you know, difficult part of our my job in particular is is uh, when you make decisions on whether you're going to bring players back. Sometimes the players that you're not going to retain or you're going to go in a different direction on are, are are players that have been very good here and they're fan favorites. Look at our fans are very passionate about our players. They never want anyone to leave, um, which is understandable, um, and it's certainly something that we always. Uh, consider of trying to keep continuity of our players and um, and try to keep our players uh, when they're playing at a high level so you certainly don't want to lose players that have good football left um, but um, you know it's it's interesting uh, when you get the, the public perception of everything because this isn't something that we just decided to do on February 8th or February 1st this is a a process that started at the end of the year and and some of those decisions were made um, you know within a week two weeks after the season and no one knows about it until free agency starts so it kind of hits everyone all at once um, and you see guys that are you know name guys that are going to other teams um, but in the case you know we, we've made some of those decisions based on um, what we feel is best for the team and there's a number of different reasons why we would or wouldn't bring a player back um, salary, age, um, uh, fit, fit uh, w with uh, with the players around them, and so 
some of those decisions are made um, prior to free agency. Um, a lot of the players that uh, that you're talking about, we didn't lose out on those players. Um, some of those players we decided not to offer contracts back uh, for various reasons. And um, I think it just hits everyone all at once because you see name after name, of they're announcing on Twitter that I'm no longer going to be back. And it's something that we we knew for some time that that wasn't going to happen. But unfortunately, it's not something that we um, you don't really want to tip your hand going into free agency of who you're bringing back and who you're not bringing back. So it's a lot of just timing. Um, I certainly understand from a, a fan perspective, but yeah, I do. In, in some cases, feel like um, you know some of the guys are are getting overshadowed by guys that aren't returning. You know, we've, we look at the the players that we re-signed back with Swerve and Shaq and Duke and the interior offensive line and. Uh, getting Tieran back, and you know Jam Jamal Morrow was a free agent. Everyone just thought he was just uh, was was just still here, but we we re-signed him back. Um, you know uh, Justin McKinnis, who's going to get an opportunity now that Braden Lenius isn't back. We we re-signed him. Uh, defensive defensively, obviously A. C. Leonard getting him back was a big deal. Uh, Pete Robertson, we knew um, there was a potential for us to lose uh, Jonathan Woodard at some point. Uh, with some of these NFL workouts, and so it was, it was important for us to get Pete back because Pete has played at a high level uh, during a short period of time. I think he had six sacks in ten games, and he wasn't a full-time starter. And uh, we look forward to seeing him play uh, more downs and 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 be more uh, more critical part of our of our team. And and then our interior guys, um, if you look at uh, the production level of, of Garrett Marino when he's played in games and um, he certainly needs to uh, to control himself in games uh, maybe have controlled aggression but um, he plays it with a high motor and his production in there is is really uh, something that you should take a look at and uh, Anthony Lanier just was 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 fantastic as someone that maybe not didn't didn't show as much on the stats but if you watch the film of him uh, he's a he's a tough person to block inside so we we felt very comfortable with our defensive line. Uh, Paul Jones is, is known for, for for finding really good defensive linemen, and he certainly has done that over the last number of years. Kyle Carson uh, was a big part of why Jonathan Woodard was here. Um, so we rely on those guys to do that. Um, Mike Edom coming back is a big one for us. He's a, a ratio guy that, that's been an all-star in the past. Uh, as I said, Nick Marshall's back. We have got two young defensive backs that got uh, – Play time for about half the year and played at a, a long level, and you know we've got one more defensive back position where someone's going to have to step up and and uh, and take over for the the void that was filled in free or wasn't filled in free agency, um, and so you know all those things are figured out and and the fallout happens kind of all at once and and uh, you know there's a little bit of a snowball effect, but um, you know it 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 doesn't scare me um, to make tough decisions. Um, we have to uh, do that in our job, and um, you know whether the timing is right or whether it works out is yet to be determined. But uh, we did want to change a little bit uh, about what we had, and and we did that with uh, with adding a few guys, but also giving some of the young guys an opportunity um, because we want to be successful for a long period of time, and we want to have a chance to win the Grey Cup every year, not just not just one. Mer well, uh, boy, you answered a lot of questions. That yeah, was we, a good we were crossing questions off the list as you went, went through them. The Ed Gainey question, the Purifoy question, the Micah Johnson mm -hmm. question. We All those voids are seemingly uh, yeah. accounted for. Um, Murr, are, are, do we have any questions left? <laughs> I just Are you trying to build a basketball team with the receivers? You seem to be going for height. You haven't got a, a post yet. But does, is that to be replaced Braden Linnaeus body type, or is there sort of a reason – Behind that, that is maybe that's the changing of the game. They're getting taller and lankier. Well, there's or, McKinnis, Ubosi, Lewis, Mc, even McRoberts. Uh, there's a lot of six foot three and up receivers that have signed or re signed in recent weeks. Yeah, we, I mean, we like the size, we like their ability to be physical, and, and uh, you know, obviously, we want to be able to, uh, to attack the ball in, in, in the air. And, um, you know, we feel that that length will help. Uh, with that, and you know, a couple of years ago when we drafted McKinnis and Lenius, um, you know, we just felt like we can get two really good guys in that draft that that ended up being 
uh, being fairly big, good size. So um, it's just kind of the way it looks, you know, when, when it's, it is, um, you know, is it by design? Um, we certainly look at it when we're looking at receivers that we like big physical receivers and ideally you like them to be, uh, to be fast as well. You know, we, we kind of supplement our receivers with Kyron who's that, um, you know, smaller s slot type player. We'll bring a couple more of those players in um, that are going to compete for that spot. You know, Kyron, we don't anticipate him being ready for the start of the season um, and certainly aren't going to press him to jeopardize any of his, his recovery. Um, by all means, he looks like he's on pace, but we don't want to shorten that just to get him in earlier in the season. So, um, you know, in the receiving course, someone's going to have to step into his position. We'll add some guys that are, you know, that kind of slot body type that are, um, you know, a little bit quicker and, and – uh, and a little bit more agile than the big, strong physical receivers that we have. So we want a balance of both um, so that we can attack teams in, in different ways. Mur? Uh, sorry, I'm looking at this here. I, I don't have anything left, Rob. Do you? Um, for, <laughs> we're talking about receivers. Farhan Lalji reported, I think, yesterday oh, yeah. that there's, there's a chance that – or there's a likelihood of Terrell Jana – Retiring, uh, is that uh, the case from your understanding? Yeah, I think far he's pretty accurate on that one there. Um, so Terrell's <laughs> reached out to us and and says that there's a pretty strong likelihood that he's going to retire from football. He's uh, he's got a pretty big degree, and um, you know from from my understanding, he's um, going through the pandemic and 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 the year in 2020. Um, was when he first kind of started considering it. He wanted to come out and uh, and and give it another shot just to make sure that he had it all out of his system. And and uh, you know, unfortunately, he's he's decided that he's he's likely going to retire here. So um, disappointing, obviously. Uh, you try to try to talk him and talk talk him out of it, but you're um, you know, I, I know from experience and doing this for a little while here that um, you know usually when a when a player is not all not all, not all into playing football, it's it's really hard to play at um, play at a high level or, or be a professional football player. And you know, credit to Terrell uh, being a professional through the whole thing. Um, I, I certainly didn't have any, any indication uh, the last little while here that he was going to retire. Um, you know, thought that he was excited about moving forward for next year and. Um, when you lose Lenius, there's there's a natural opportunity there for somebody to step up. Um, so you're hopefully that he was going to come back and compete. But you know, uh, called he's just a a, ter a tremendous person. He really is, and super smart. Um, maybe uh, maybe he's onto something with deciding to move on to the real world with without uh, banging his body up a little bit more. But um, you know, I, we anticipate that he's going to retire. Uh, the 2007 team is going to be saluted very soon in Saskatoon uh, at the Dogs Breck. Uh, how uh, how cool is that going to be? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We did a little bit of media yesterday, a um, little bit of introduction on on the guys that are going to be attending. It's going to be uh, myself, uh, Scott Schultz, uh, Tad Cornegay, and Andy Fantu. So we, we did a little bit of uh, media, a little bit of build-up for that uh, uh for that dog's breakfast, it's it's just I don't I don't know if you guys have, have attended the dog's breakfast before. I'm sure you have, but um, just just an awesome uh, fundraiser for for the Huskies. Uh, they put on a great show. the uh, The efficiency of what way they put out the breakfast uh, is just amazing. How quickly you think a program like that would have to take a long while, and they're just so efficient in the way they do everything. So happy to support uh, local local football in Saskatchewan it's been so good for the Rough Riders uh, not only the U of S but the U of R and and uh, to be able to go on there and reminisce and I think Glenn Glenn Suter uh, said it best it's kind of like the fishing story that uh, you know the, the five pound <laughs> fish turns into a 15 pounder after a number of years so I'm sure we'll have some uh, some stories to tell and and some jokes to be had but uh, it will be nice to reminisce and think back but um, I can't believe it's it's been that long, I, to be honest with you. But it was great to see those guys, even on a Zoom call. It'll be great to see them in person, and uh, I'm sure we're, they'll have some good stories to share with everyone. And it's a great it's a great uh, fundraiser. We gave you a bit of a sneak preview today, actually, because our questions were a bit of a dog's breakfast. So hopefully this steals <laughs> you well for <laughs> the event in Saskatoon. Murray, do you have any uh, 
final questions to add? To I that, can't uh, think of unless Jeremy has. Racism? No, I, I can't think any better than that last one. Uh, uh, Jeremy, is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> you'd like to say to the fans why we got you on here? Is there anything you want to kind of use as a platform? Or we the, grilled you enough? We're always, you know, we're, we're always... <laughs> We're always excited about the upcoming year. Obviously, having the Grey Cup year is is a big motivation for us. Um, you know, I always like to temper everyone and, and say that it's it's not uh, what we look like in December or February. It's what we you know what we look like in in training camp and and how we come together as a team. And um, you know, I think I said this on on media for the Dro Dogs Breakfast uh, uh, yesterday was. Um, you know what? What I've learned throughout my time of being in the locker room and and my time uh, being in, in football operations is, you know, it's 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 as much about the team, uh, the team camaraderie. It's as much about as much about the the room, meaning the locker room, and the players uh, coming together and really believing in each other as it is the talent. Um, you certainly need good players. You certainly need guys that are going to uh, score touchdowns and, and sack the quarterback, but it's the added element uh, of, of the locker room that, that puts you over top. And, and uh, it's a common theme when, when you see teams win championships. Um, obviously, everyone's happy when they win, but you can sense, uh, you can sense the reason why they won it uh, by how close they are to one another and what it means to each other. So um, that's what we're trying to do. That's what me and Coach Dickey believe in is, uh, is, is the camaraderie of the room. And guys uh, wanting to win from each for each other, wanting to win for the for the head coach, and wanting to win for uh, the fans in the province. So um, that's what we're after. That's what we've been after for the last number of years. Uh, we've been close, and um, we're just looking to uh, to, to to find uh, that little bit that can get us over the edge and um, and 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 win another Grey Cup. Perfect. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for these forty-two minutes that you can't have back. Um, <laughs> We do appreciate your time and your and your thoughts. You've been really uh, helpful. I'm sure the fans appreciate uh, those sentiments as well. And you got some bonus no time with Murray, so that's almost like a day off. <laughs> there, isn't it? Hey, Murray, who's going to be your quarterback next year? Oh, I have no Mason idea. Mason Rudolph. Mason, Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. Take that's... take Teddy Bridgewater, please. No, thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking Mason Rudolph. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure, guys. I'm, I haven't got to see you in a while, and, and uh, it's always a pleasure. I think the last time we did this, we were at the, uh, we were at the leader post in, in the, uh, the room mm -hmm. with the, uh, the panels on the walls, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I need directions to get there now. It's been almost <laughs> two years since we worked there. So uh, coming up on March 16th, I think, was the last day we actually were working there, per se. So Unreal. I'm doing well, this in my get, bedroom. Hopefully we get so. back to some norm normality and we'll see, see you guys at the stadium a little more often. Look yeah. forward to it. Thanks so much, Jeremy. I just got to uh, chime in with the, with the thing that I am obligated to read at the end so that I don't get fired. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast, please leave a review and a five-star rating. It helps us grow the podcast. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Murray, Murray knows all about Stitcher because he's had three hip replacements. If you'd like to send us a question, you can email Rob at rvanstone at postmedia.com and we'll read it on the show. You can follow me, Rob, on Twitter at, at Rob Vanstone or Murray at Murray LP. Sorry for that joke. Jeremy, thanks again for your time. Murray, uh, we look forward to uh, having you join us again in the future and uh, hope all as well. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. it, guys. Yeah. Take care.